All right, it's the morning of uh, day four. We just struck camp maybe an hour ago. Uh, I've been cruising on a ridge line for a little while. Uh, I think I've reached uh, maximum ripeness. We're all pretty smelly. I've plateaued there. And then uh, we were talking about sleeping last night. So yesterday, yesterday was a 15 mile day. And we got it to camp like maybe an hour before dark. And then we were all kind of like racing around trying to get camp set up and our man chores done. And, um, and then it was dark and you know, we chilled for a couple minutes, but we were exhausted from hiking 15 miles. So we all got into our beds. But I think, cause we went from like a hundred miles an hour to zero, you know, we're trying to do that. Like my adrenaline was still going. So I just laid there and I was, we were just talking. We were all the same where we just laid in bed and kind of like fiddle farted around for hours trying to go to sleep. And then there was some owl um, hooting activity last night, aggressive owl hooting activity. Uh, so that, that got noisy. I eventually, I got the earplugs out. It was that bad. But, um, yeah. So, I guess it's a cumulative effect, right? So we've, we've been doing high mileage. And then last night, not sleeping so hot. I'm, I'm feeling a little worn down today. But still, still good. Still chipper, right? Glad to be out here. Um, we're going to head to Blood Mountain Cabins. We're going to spend the night there and then kind of like flip-flop for the, uh, the rest of the hike. So looking forward to a hot shower and uh, a town meal tonight. All right, I'll check in later. Just pulled out of Hog Pen Gap. Here we go. Yeah, so I was talking to my buddies earlier, and I was saying that uh, I have a bad back. <clears throat> Periodically, it goes out for no reason at all. And when that happens, like, I'm down for days. I can't walk. I'm talking about, like, breaking a sweat in pain if I try to do anything at all. And uh, they were all like, yeah, we got the same thing. And I always had this, like, subconscious fear that... My back would go out while I was out here. Because it makes sense that it would, because, like, you know, you're exerting yourself harder than ever. But so far, so good, you know, knock on wood. I don't even know what you would do if that happened. Like, I would have to zero out for days and then crawl back to my car. You know what? I think that's that um, that shark mountain again. Just when you thought it was safe to go back to the mountains, you're hiking and you hit that. <laughs> so we just stopped for uh, water refill. We're like three miles from uh, Blood Mountain Cabins where we're going to spend the night and then flip-flop starting tomorrow. Um, but we were talking about water filtration at the water hole and I think all three of us use the Sawyer squeeze filters and we have all had the same experience where 
you know, we're all pretty diligent about when we get home from our hiking trip, we clean our gear out, backwash the filter, and then when you get ready to go hiking, the next trip, you pull out your shorter squeeze and uh, it's plugged up solid. And like for this trip, that happened to me and I had to use, um, I used bleach, um, pretty strong concoction of bleach to break it loose and it took some doing. Like I was flexing out on my squeeze bottle pretty hard before that thing finally opened up. And uh, I mean, I wasn't afraid to use bleach and squeeze because um, I've actually used bleach in an eyedropper in the past as my uh, primary water purification system. I think it was like, uh, I would do like two to three drops per liter and that worked for years. But now, um, now we just had a debate about whether or not I should even backwash my filter when I get home or just backwash it like just before we leave in the field with spring water, you know, like your last stop and just leave it at that because like I suspect it's a hardness level or I don't know if it's chlorine for city water or what might be plugging these Sawyer filters up. But if you guys have any thoughts on that or suggestions, maybe you could comment down below how we can do things better. So we spent the night at Blood Mountain Cabins last night. Uh, Ours was a raccoon cabin. Had some crazy stuffed raccoon situation in there. I'll try to roll on a picture. But uh, the plan today is, uh, well the overall plan, Jesus, I gotta figure out how to put this together in my head. So it was a flip-flop hike. So we were, we were gonna, we hiked from North Carolina basically back to the Blood Mountain cabins and then the second half of the hike which is what we're engaging in now was going to be from Springer Mountain back to Blood Mountain cabins. Um, we had a, a unfortunate event occur yesterday. Jeff's injured his, uh, his right knee and he might be out, we don't know. But uh, he's with us this morning. He shuttled us over to Springer Mountain. So we're making the one mile out and back hike with Jeff. He's here with us. We're glad to have him. And then uh, me and Jack are gonna continue slack packing for, I don't know, probably a 12 mile day today. And then Jeff's gonna pick us up, bring us back to Blood Mountain's cabins. And then tomorrow, drop us off with like our full packs to finish out the hike. And he might join us tomorrow. Uh, we gotta see how his knee's feeling. I'm pulling for him. I think he's gonna pull. I think he just needs a zero. Kinda let things calm down down there. And then tomorrow he's back in the game. But that's the plan. Right now we're hiking to the top of Springer. Here's the iconic uh, plaque. Top Springer. There's Jeff, video recording the event like me. All right, all right. Yeah, right off of Springer. This is the coolest, like, little natural cave shelter area I think I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of them, but this thing is like, it's like an overhang. This ledge has to be four feet out. And I mean, it dries a bone under there. In an emergency, man, that is like ideal. Most of these little caves that you come across, pro you'd probably be better off just sleeping out in the rain than trying to take shelter in a cave because it's just so damp and yuck. But that was cool. And of course, on the way up here, um, like we brought, we left the packs in the car just for this one mile up and back. So even the empty packs we left in the car, and I got like halfway up here, and of course I got to go to the bathroom, number two. So I just had to pick a bunch of leaves. <sighs> Ran up the Benton McKay Trail where it broke off. Did my morning constitution. I don't have that like 
cabin fresh feeling anymore now though. Jesus. All right, so me and Jack are trucking along. We're at mile like six point something. It's 12 noon. So we're making a pretty good pace. We think we're around two miles an hour. And uh, I guess this is really my first time in my life I've ever slack packed. And well, I guess I can't really say it. I mean, it's very reminiscent of like just day packing. Like, but since we didn't have um, day packs, we just used our regular backpacks and took like the bare, min bare minimum that we would need to survive for, you know, the next five miles or whatever. Um, but it feels really good. I mean, like, it's remarkable the difference of how my body feels after six miles of hiking with like a full backpack on to what I'm carrying now. I feel great. <laughs> I mean, this is so easy. Uh, it just makes you wish that like, you know, we were sometime way in the distant future where backpacking gear was like nothing. <laughs> but so far it's just been a nice, uh, a really nice hike. Yeah, we just popped out of uh, the AT and here's this, here's this meadow. It's like, how does this happen? Is somebody coming out here and mowing this thing or? Why is there not trees here? It does look like there's some car tracks. But I've seen this before, like like balls, like um, on the sides of mountains and stuff where you're out in the middle of nowhere and there's just this meadow. And I don't understand why the trees are there all around it, but there's no trees in this area. I think my wife was telling me about some book that um, her, her kids were reading where this kid like lived in a tree like that uh -huh. for like a year or something and I forget the story but man that is a huge tree first of all it's hard to get the uh the perspective of how big that thing is but it's got to be probably four or five feet across not around across the hole in it is big enough to like I could definitely like crawl in there that's cool Heading north from Springer, uh, not much of a view day mountain-wise. Very, uh, very pristine and pretty with the uh, streams. But just stumbled across this little micro view. It's adorable. <laughs> 